Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be answering the simple yet long debated question in the community. Which is better to open, a niche store or a general store? I understand why there is a lot of confusion on this question because there are a lot of different opinions on this subject. For example, one of our guest contributors on this channel, millionaire dropshipper Adrian Morrison, has taught our wholesale TED subscribers in the past in our video collaborations to open general stores, otherwise known as flex stores. And it's not hard to see why, since it has been extremely profitable for him and his students. But on the other hand, you've got me, who both on this channel and inside our premium dropshipping course, The Dropship Club, recommends that beginners start out with niche doors. And it's not just me as well. Two other guest contributors to this channel, millionaire dropshippers Fred Lamb and Aidan Booth, have both recommended in the past that beginners start out with niche doors. And it's pretty easy to see why, since this has been a very profitable strategy for them as well. So how can so many successful people and dropshippers all have different opinions on what should seemingly be a basic question? Well, I'm going to give a quick spoiler. The reason for that is because that neither method is better than the other. The truth is, both methods have pros and cons. So let's jump straight into this video so that you can see which method is right for you. So let's talk about why people like Adrian like to open general stores, or as he calls it, flex stores. And there are two reasons for this. Drum roll please. One, they make the most money. Two, they are less work in the long run. General stores can easily make the most money. Why? Well, because of the most obvious reason being that you've got more potential customers for your store. So a good example of a potential general store that you could make is one about pets. Instead of building a site around a specific type of pet like a dog or a cat, or even a store that's more specific and niche, like focusing on a specific type of breed of dog such as a poodle or a Labrador retriever, you decide to make your store about a more general topic, pets. Well now you've suddenly got access to a whole bunch of customers, don't you? You can now sell to people that have dogs, you can sell to people that have cats, you can sell to people that have birds, you can sell to people that have fishes. Because you have access to so many more customers, you obviously can make more money from this single store. But there is another reason why general store cheerleaders like Adrian like them so much, and that's because you've got access to a whole lot more products. And this is more important than you might think. Because the thing with paid ads, like Facebook ads, is that over time they tend to become saturated. And when this happens, the ad will start to fall off. Perhaps for months your ad has been super hot, the product has been selling like crazy, and you've been making $1,000 a day from a single item. But eventually the ad audience becomes saturated, the ad cools off, the engagement cools off, and so do the sales. Now this doesn't mean that the ad is dead forever. A really good practice is to shelve the ad for a few months and then to restart it again with a fresh audience. But what it does mean is that you have now lost your winning item. You've gone from making $1,000 a day to making $0 a day. Womp womp. Now there is actually an easy way to avoid going from $1,000 a day to $0 a day, and that is to not be lazy and to keep testing products. The successful six-figure dropshippers do this. When they find a $1,000 a day winning product, they don't just sit back and stop there. They keep testing more products, and they keep finding more winning items. And they don't just do this so that they can keep earning more money. They do this so that they have other winning items when one becomes saturated. And this is something that Aidan Booth actually talked about in our video, how to make a million dollars in a year. On that video, he shared with us his blueprint for how he uses virtual assistants to automate this testing process for him so he can keep finding more and more winning items. And this can be a challenge with opening a niche store. If you pick a niche that is too niche, then you can run out of products to test because you've already tested them all. So even if you have a very high converting ad for a Labrador Retriever necklace, if the ad audience for it becomes saturated and you need to cool it off, you're potentially going to be in a bit of a tough spot. Why? Well, because if you go to AliExpress and do a search for similar Labrador Retriever trinkets, since it is such a specific niche, you could very well discover that there just aren't many other high-selling Labrador Retriever trinkets like this for you to be testing. And thus, your store grinds to a halt. 
Now, yes, there is a solution for people that choose to go with the niche store strategy for this problem, and that is to open multiple niche stores. So once you've got a successful store that targets one niche, you could then go and create another store that targets a different niche and so on and so on. But the truth is building up new niche stores from scratch rather than just adding in new products to an existing store to test is definitely going to be more work. All of this means with a general store you can make more money in the long term with just a single store because of the fact that you have access to far more customers. And long term it's going to require less work to be testing and finding new winning items. So at this point you're probably thinking, well Sarah, why on earth are you recommending niche stores? Well, here are the reasons. One, they make beginners money faster. Two, they are easier for beginners to convert sales. And that's the thing about niche stores. They are much easier for beginners to initially make money in sales from, and this is for two reasons. Reason one, you can brand your store around the niche. When a customer comes into a store after seeing item that's related to their favorite pet, which is a cat, and they see your logo that has a cat on it, well, they know that this store is for them. And when they see that you've named it Perfect Goodies, they either laugh or smile or cringe at the pun store name, while, importantly, identifying with it. And of course, when they go to your About Us page and see that you are passionately talking about cats, they love it. It creates much stronger branding and it gives your site a personality. General stores struggle with branding in the early stages for this reason. And branding does two important things. It builds a connection between you and your prospective customer, plus it builds trust as well. And the more customers feel connected to you, and the more that the customers trust you, the higher your conversion rate will be. In other words, the easier it will be to make sales. Reason two, it's much easier to make upsells and cross-sells. When a cat owner comes to a site that's about pets, they're gonna see a lot of items that are not relevant to them at all. They don't have a fish, they don't care about those items, they don't have a dog, they don't wanna buy dog-related items. So when they click onto your homepage and see these categories teased, they're not going to be very interested. On the other hand, if they were to click onto your homepage and see that the other items in the categories listed on there were about cats, well, they would be far more interested. Look at all these cat items! I want to buy them all! And it makes it much easier for you to do follow-up marketing with email newsletters and social media because you know that whatever the item is that you're promoting, it's going to be relevant to all of your customers. So you will get a much higher conversion, not only from people purchasing your initial items, but from follow-up campaigns as well. And they will be more likely to pay attention to your follow-up campaigns in the future because they know that the last one sent to them was relevant to their interests. What this all means is that beginners tend to have success and find winning items faster when they open niche stores. And honestly, I recommend niche stores because I know for many of you out there that are just beginning, you don't know if all of this actually works or not. And that is okay. Right now, it sort of seems like a pipe dream that you could have a store where if you spend money on ads, it makes more money back than you spent. That is super cool, but also kind of super strange. You're used to having to exchange your time for money. You're used to making money from a job. That's how you make money, right? There is a fog, a fuzziness, until you make your first dollar online. It's a dream that you're not really sure if it's real or not. But when you do make your first dollar online, everything just clicks because now you see that it works and your motivation levels skyrocket because now you believe in it. So ultimately, it comes down to this. Scaling your business from five figures a month to over six figures a month for dropshipping is going to be a lot easier with a general store. But scaling your business from zero dollars a month to five figures a month is going to be a lot easier in a niche store. Each has their own pros and cons, and you need to pick the one that is right for you. Thanks for watching. If you would like to get more videos about dropshipping, then be sure to subscribe to Wholesale Ted and click that little notification bell next to it so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. And don't forget that here at Wholesale Ted, we have a free ebook, How to Make $10,000 a Month Online with Dropshipping. You'll find a link on how you can download it in the video description below.